Hi everyone and welcome to another special video in trigonometry. So today we're going to be learning about the sine rule and the cosine rule and these are going to be very useful in your knowledge of trigonometry. They're going to enhance your knowledge as you go to the very next level. All right, without wasting time, let's get into today's video. All right, let's look, take a look at the sine rule. Otherwise, what they call the law of sines. So what is the sine rule? So the law of sines or sine rule is very useful for solving triangles. So now in this section, we're going to look at laws that actually work on all triangles. Unlike the different laws that we've done before, these ones can work on any triangle. And that includes what we call even a scalene triangle. So we're saying this is especially the case when we have a scalene triangle where all sides are of different lengths and all three angles are of different measures. So this case works for especially those triangles that don't have uh, some sides looking equal or angles uh, having something identical. So this is where this, these laws come in. All right, so this is how we derive the sine rule. So we actually have here a circle that is circumscribing uh, a triangle, a triangle that is actually set within. So inside this triangle, we've actually dotted a line from the center towards this as you can see that this angle here as you can see that this angle here is twice this angle if the angle here is equal to a this angle here is equal to 2a and because we've actually split this right through the middle we can actually see that this side is a and this is a r is the radius of the circle all right so the figure shows a circle with center o so this is the center and radius r circumscribing triangle ABC. Angle BOC is equal to 2A as you can already see. It is twice the angle formed at any point on the circumference. So it's actually twice this angle here and this angle here and this angle here. So what happens here is every this triangle here is actually equilateral. So the angle the val the angle here this value here is the same as that value there and that value there. So this triangle here in the middle as you look at this dotted one here triangle boc this here is actually isosceles the reason it's isosceles is because this side is equal to that side because an isosceles triangle is one where two sides are equal so od bisects angle boc and side bc this is line od it actually bisects the line uh, bc as you can see and uh and that's how it actually works. It's also bisects BOC. So therefore, we can see that BD is equal to a half A. BD is equal to a half A. That is because we've chosen to represent the line BC by small letter A, as you can see. Since this angle here is equal to 2A, we've chosen to represent this entire line here by A. And what happens is this portion here, BD, is going to be equal to a half of A. All right, so let's continue with that. So from triangle BOD, we can see that sine of A is equal to a half A divided by R. Because remember, that sine of anything is opposite over add, I mean opposite over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse being R and then the the half a being the opposite side of letter a and then when we solve that we can actually see that small with that this can actually be resolved as small a over 2 r so therefore sine of a is equal to small a over 2 r of which small a represents the sides we can also see that 2 r is equal to small a over sine a so we do that by uh, cross multiplying and exchanging by making 2R the subject, we get that. All right. If instead we consider triangles AOC and AOB, we can also see that 2R is equal to small b over sine capital B and 2R is also equal to small c over sine capital C. So therefore, in general, we can see that small a over sine a is equal to small b over sine b is equal to small c over sine of capital C, all being equal to 2R. And that is actually what we call the sine rule. I believe the reason it's called the sine rule is because you can actually see sine values all around the denominators. All right, so that's how we derive the sine rule. 
and this works for any triangle. All right. Now let's look at this triangle here. So this is an example of a triangle where we're going to make use of sine rule and we're going to see how the rule works. So A, small a, small b, and small c are the sides, as you can see. Capital A, capital B, and capital C are the angles. So you can see that side small a faces angle capital A, and then side small b faces angle capital B. And then you can see that the side lowercase c faces angle capital C. So therefore, that means in general, this can the sine rule that works here is small a over sine capital A is equal to small b over sine capital B is equal to small c over sine capital C. So that's how we actually interpret the sine rule. We compare the opposite sides with the angle that it's actually facing. And this is true for all triangles. So let's look at some questions. So we're given a question. Solve the triangle in which AB is equal to 5 centimeters and AC is equal to 4 centimeters. And angle angle ACB is equal to 60 degrees. So the first thing you do here is you actually just sketch. So when you sketch this, it will actually make sense. So therefore, we state the sine rule. So this is our sine rule here. And as you can see, we can actually use any sides. So we are asked to solve this. So solving it means generally we actually just find all the missing uh, sides and all the missing angles. So we don't have the side BC and we are missing the angle BSC and also we are missing the angle ABC. So we need these two angles and we need this side here. So we're going to make use of the sign rule to find that. So the first thing we're going to do, let's first find angle ABC. Let's first work out this angle. And how do we work out that angle? We are going to pick out this and this. So these two will help us find that angle. Because you can actually see that the angle B here is and it's unknown. And this is what we're going to be finding. And we already know what small b represents because small b is 4 centimeters. We know what small c represents because small c, which is opposite of this, is 5 centimeters. Then we also know what sine capital C is because it's 60 degrees. So this is the best alternative to use. So while using it, we, we've we substituted in the values. Then we can make sine b the subject. Then we have b being sine inverse of that. And then we get the answer of b as 43.85 degrees. All right. Now that we found that, uh, I believe we now that we know this angle here, it's now going to be easy to find this third angle. We can simply find this by rules of triangles because we know that all three angles of a triangle must total up to 180 degrees. So from angles of a triangle, we know A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. So therefore, if you total them like that, we can have A as being 180 minus that, and then A becomes 76.15 degrees all right now to find the side b we can also make use of the sine rule but this time we shall make use of that so now we know now that we know what this is and we are looking for small a which is the side that represents bc we can actually use this side of the sine rule and then we just need to find the sine uh, the a value that is unknown so we have it like that so a ends up being equal to 5.6 centimeters. All right. So we can actually see that we've actually found uh, all the unknowns that we needed. So now that, now we know that AB is equal to 5.6 centimeters. Consider the angle BS is 76.15 degrees. And also the angle ABC is now equal to 43.85 degrees. Hence, we've solved this question. All right. So that's it with the sine rule. Let's look at the law of cosines or the cosine rule. So it states that the square of the length of any side of a given triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the length of the other sides minus twice the product of the other two sides multiplied by the cosine of angle included between them. So if we have our triangle here, so this is an example of a triangle, we're saying a small a, small u, small c, uh, lowercase, uh, those lowercases are the sides. Then we have the capital A, capital B, and capital C angles. So, so this is what we have. So it states that A squared, which is the side A, which is this one, it says that when you square this, the answer is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 
2 BC cos of capital A. So that's that's one of the rules. So that is true when you have small a. So this same rule also applies when you also have small b. So in the case of small b, this is how it's actually stated. So in case you have small c, when you don't find this side, this is actually the rule that you apply. So when it comes to cosine rule, you actually have a way of stating each one of the sides. So it gives you a format of finding each of the sides of the triangle using any of this. So you can, so depending on what you're finding, you can use any of these. I encourage you to memorize them. It will make your work so much easier. So let's look at an example of a question. Solve the triangle in which AB is equal to 6 centimeters, BC is equal to 4 centimeters, and angle ABC is equal to 48.2 degrees. So let's first sketch this. So sketching makes this a lot easier. As you can see, we are missing out the angle BCA. Then we're also missing out the angle BAC. So these two need to be found. Then we're also missing this side. Now, sine rule could have also worked for this number. So sine rule could have been applicable. But because we are looking at the cosine rule, let's make use of it in this question. All right, calculating side SC. Let's find side SC. So we know that this side here is represented by small b because it is opposite to the angle where there is capital B. So this is going to be small b. So we're finding this. So we're going to use the cosine rule that includes the small b squared. So we have that right there. And then we're going to just substitute in the values. So when you substitute in the values that are unknown, you have that. Then we end up with this. So we have b squared is equal to 52 minus 48 cos 48.2 degrees. Then we end up with b squared being equal to 20. And then we have root of 20 as being the value of b. And then when we press that in our calculator, we can see that b is equal to 4.47 centimeters. And hence we found small b. Okay, so now let's find the angles. So calculating angle SCB, we can also make use of the cosine rule. And then from here, we use the cosine rule of small c squared because that includes the angle capital C. So the angle that we're looking for is right here. And we now know the values of these unknowns. So we can actually make use of this cosine rule. So when we substitute in the values, we end up with that, of which we know 6 squared on the left-hand side is equal to 36. Then we end up with that. So cos of C ends up being equal to negative 0 0.24 over 35.76. And then we have cos inverse of that. And then we end up with having the value of the angle C being equal to 90.4 degrees. And hence we've calculated the angle SCB. All right. How about calculating the remaining angle? Now the remaining angle is now easy to solve. We don't need to use cosine rule again, though it would work. We only simple, simply need to use the laws of angles of a triangle. We know that the angles of a triangle all must total to 180 degrees. So whenever you know at least two angles of a triangle, you just need to use the laws of angles of a triangle. So we now have that. And then you can find that A shall be equal to 41.4 degrees. So therefore, we have AC being 4.4 centimeters. Angle BAC is 41.4 degrees. And then angle ACB is 90.4 degrees and hence we solve this question all right so there are some similarities between the sine and cosine rules as you've seen they can actually apply in almost both similar numbers but now there are some differences and some similarities between the two so right now let's first look at the similarities so I think both rules can be used to solve various types of triangles, including scaling, right angles, triangles, and all other types of triangles. So this is a good, this is good because they can help us to solve and find angles of any kind of triangle. So this is an advantage, it's a useful tool for us to have both of them. So both rules involve the lengths of the sides of a triangle. The sine rule relates the lengths of the sides of the sines of the opposite angles. While the cosine rule relates the lengths of the sides to the cosines of the adjacent angles. And then both rules involve the measures of the angles of the triangle. So the sine rule relates the measures of the angles to the ratios of the side lengths, while the cosine rule relates the measures of the angles to the ratios of the side lengths and cosines of the angles. Alright, so that's it with the similarities.
and then when to use either sine or cosine rule so there are different use cases where we will either have to choose between sine and cosine rule so for the vast majority of numbers you can use either of them but in there are cases where only one rule would work so you just may want to know when those cases are but but to but it will be more helpful if you just knew both of them all right so you can use the cosine rule when you are given two sides and the included angle or when you're given three sides and want to work out an angle so in in case you're given an example where no angle is given uh for example and you only have the lengths of the three sides i believe there you cannot even there is no way of using the sine rule because sine rule needs you to at least know one of the angles of the of the vertices but now when you don't know any of the angles or if none of them is given that's when it becomes wise to use cosine rule and then in order to use the sine rule you need to know either two angles and a side or two sides and a non included angle all right so this is where you would choose to use either sine or cosine rule i hope this makes sense let's move on to the next part all right now in this next part i just want to introduce to you a small concept called co-function identities so this is going to be helpful in our understanding in trigonometry so just want to show you what this means so co-function identities are trigonometric identities that show a relationship between complementary angles and complementary angles of course means 90 degrees 90 degrees is can also be written as pi over 2 in radian form so when two angles add to 90 degrees we say they complement each other so consider a right angled triangle abc right with right angles at b then we ass assume that angle c is equal to theta then using the angle sum property we have this so now that we've stated that remember that the total of the angles of a triangle total to 180 degrees but now we've said that the angle at b is 90 degrees and the angle at c is theta so that means we substitute in the values of b and c and then we end up with this so a plus theta will be equal to 180 minus 90 degrees so we end up with a plus theta being equal to 90 degrees and then a will be equal to 90 degrees minus theta so if we place this in a right angle triangle so that's what we have we have the angle at c being equal to theta and the angle at b being equal to 90 then the angle at a as we've now just calculated is equal to 90 degrees minus theta so let's see how these co-function identities are derived so therefore we have three angles of the triangle abc as a 90 minus theta b 90 degrees and c is theta all right so let's uh derive this so you recall from trigonometric formula that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse and tan theta is opposite over adjacent so now therefore we remember from this triangle that we actually just sketched right now so by looking at this right angle triangle we can see that sine theta is the same as a b over a c of which a b represents the opposite and then a c represents the hypotenuse but remember that if you now consider this angle here let's consider this angle here we can see that uh, the cos of this angle is equal to remember that cos is adjacent over uh, over hypotenuse of which the adjacent here is a b and then its hypotenuse is also a c so you can actually see that there is actually a way that this can actually interchange and it's also similar to this so you can actually see from here that that means that the value that we get from sine theta is equal to cos of 90 degrees cross bracket 90 degrees minus theta because they all now represent and give the same answer so that means that these two are equal and hence we derive the first co-function identity how about when you consider cos of theta remember that cos is adjacent over hypotenuse so the adjacent is represented by bc the adjacent of this theta is bc then its hypotenuse is ac and then but we can also see that the sine of this 90 minus 30 is also equal to it's equal to its opposite over its hypotenuse right? so this can be written as cos of theta being equal to sine of 90 degrees minus theta so that's a similarity there and then 
that is going to be the second cofunction identity. How about when it comes to tan theta being equal to AB over BC? So we have that, we can also see that tan of 90 degrees minus theta is equal to BC over AB. Now this do not relate directly because you can actually see that these are actually inverses or reverse of each other. So now to make this identical, we actually have to have the inverse of that so we know that now one over this is exactly equal to that but one over tan 90 minus theta is equal to cot 90 minus theta of which this is now exactly similar to uh to that okay so therefore we can see that tan theta is equal to cot bracket 90 degrees minus theta and that's going to be the third cofunction identity all right, now let's look at the inverse form. So what is the value of one over sine of theta? Now we know that the value of one over sine theta is the same as, so this is more like the reverse or the inverse of sine of theta itself. So remember sine of theta meant AB over SC. So one over sine theta will now be SC over AB. But we know that one over sine theta means cosec theta. But we can also see that the inverse of cos 90 degrees minus theta is equal to is also equal to AC over AB. So there is a similarity between these two. So we know that 1 over cos 90 degrees minus theta is a sec. So it becomes sec 90 degrees minus theta. And now we can see the similarity. So therefore cosec theta is equal to sec 90 degrees minus theta. And then we derive the fourth cofunction identity. How about when we have 1 over cos theta? 1 over cos theta is now also the inverse or the reverse of cos theta. Since cos theta was equal to BC over SC, now this one is also is going to be equal to SC over BC, of which 1 over cos theta means sec theta. And then, but we know that also 1 over sine 90 degrees minus theta is equal to SC over BC. So, but we know so that 1 over sine 90 minus theta is also is a cosec, so it becomes cosec. So we can see that the relationship here is that sec theta is equal to cosec 90 degrees minus theta. And then that's the fifth cofunction identity. And lastly, we also know that 1 over tan theta means the inverse or the reverse of tan theta, which is now going to be BC over AB. But 1 over tan theta means cot theta. But we know that uh, tan theta i mean we know that tan 90 degrees minus theta is equal to bc over a b we can actually see that here there is actually a direct relationship so this is exactly equal to uh, that so we can see that cot theta now therefore will be equal to tan 90 degrees minus theta and hence that is the sixth cofunction identity so, all right so therefore in summary we have these are our final cofunction identities so these are the six cofunction identities that we've actually derived and these are what we're going to be making use of all right so let's look at some questions so we've been asked to find the value of acute angle x if sine x is equal to cos 20 degrees now we already know that there are different ways of working out this now we could simply have said that x is equal to sine inverse of the answer we get from cos 20 but now that is uh, another way but now in this section i want us to make use of the cofunction identities so now using cofunction identity sine theta is equal to cos 90 degrees minus theta the reason we make use of that is because that is the cofunction identity that relates a sine to a cos okay so that's the reason why we make use of it so this is what will help us prove this because they actually are arranged in a similar way so we're going to first compare this to this uh, so we can already see that sine of x will be equal to cos of 90 degrees minus x now remember that the most important thing is the angle you have here is the angle that is substituted here so in our case we have an x here so we're going to have that x appearing there so that's what we have so therefore this means that this value is what we're going to equate to the cos 20 degrees so we have that cos bracket 90 degrees minus x is equal to cos 20 degrees now we can compare the values inside the brackets because they are actually identical and then we have that and then we're going to have x as being equal to 70 
degrees. So therefore, the value of x is 70 degrees if sine of x is equal to cos 20 degrees. As simple as that. Alright, let's look at another one. Evaluate the value of x if sec 5x is equal to cosec x plus 18 degrees where 5x is an acute angle. So this is what we actually have there. Now which one does this relate to? A sec and a cosec. Let's look at our co-function identities. So we're going to make use of this one as you can see. So this relates a sec a sec on the left hand side and a cosec here. So this is what's going to be making use of and then this is what we end up with. So using co-function identity sec theta is equal to cosec 90 degrees minus theta. As you can see, let's first compare the value on the left hand side with what we have there. As you can see, we have a 5x here. Then that's why we're going to have a 5x here. Because the value of theta here is the value that you put here. And then that's what we actually have. So therefore, it means that this can now be equated to that. So therefore, we have that. Now we can compare the values inside the brackets. That's what we have. 90 degrees minus 5x is equal to x plus 18 degrees. Now collecting like terms, we have 90 degrees minus 18, which is 72. And then we have x plus 5x, which is equal to 6x. And that's what we end up with. Now dividing both sides by 6, we can actually see that x is equal to 12 degrees. And hence, therefore, the value of x is 12 degrees. If sec of 5x is equal to cosec uh, bracket x plus 18 degrees. So that's what you actually have. Alright, let's look at some other questions. Now, these are more of proof related. Now, these are going to be help us uh, improve our knowledge of the sine rule and the cosine rule. So, let's look at these one by one. So, we have small a squared minus small b squared over c squared is equal to sine capital A minus b over sine capital A plus b. So for this case, these are these these just need you to follow the series of steps that I'm actually going to show you. So let's prove from the left hand side. I always prefer proving from where we actually have the small letters towards the capital letters. That will make it so much easier. So from the left hand side, we actually have that. Now we know that from sine rule, we have small a over sine capital A is equal to uh, lowercase b over sine capital B is equal to lowercase c over sine capital C is equal to 2R. So we know the sine rule is stated that way. Now when we cross multiply, we can actually see that small a can be stated as 2R sine capital A. Small b can actually be stated as 2R sine capital B and small Alright, so we can see that small a is equal to 2R sine capital A, small b is equal to 2R sine capital B and small c is equal to 2R sine capital C. So substituting in those values to where we have the A, B and C, we can actually see that this is what we have. Now we can open brackets and then everything in brackets is squared and that's what we end up with. Now we can factorize out 4R squared on both sides. Alright, so let's uh, continue with that. So when you pull out 4R squared, you can see that it cancels out from the denominator and denominator and the numerator. Then that's what you actually remain with. So we remain with those squares. But I can see that the values in the numerator can be expanded as that. So it's the same as sine A plus sine B is equal to sine A minus sine B. Now let's deal with the denominator. I want to make a change to that capital C because in the final proof there is only an A and a B. So we actually have to eliminate that capital C as the next step. So we know from angles of a triangle that A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. So C is equal to 180 degrees minus A plus B. So we're going to substitute that in and that's what we actually have. So wherever there is a C, we're going to put that. So we now end up with sine of 180 minus that and then bracket. So the squared that we have here, we're going to place it outside. All right. So when we have that, we can actually see that we can actually expand the denominator as a compound angle. And that's what we have. Now, remember that a sine of 180 is zero. And then a cos of 180 is a negative one. So the negative one here will affect this to become a positive then we end up having a sine a plus b with the squared outside. Now we can move on to applying a factor formula to our numerator. 
So we're going to apply factor formula to both. So when you apply the factor formula on the on one of them, so this expands to that, and then this expands to that using factor formula. Now, after this step, we can actually see that the now the easiest thing to do here is to collect like terms. So as you can see, there is an a plus b over two here. Then there is an a plus b over two here. So we're going to bring the values that have a plus b over two together and the values that have a minus b over two together. So when we rearrange this, we actually end up with that. Now let's just reserve these twos and keep them where they are. So we've grouped the a plus b over two and then the a minus b over two. Now the reason I grouped them this way is because they remind me of uh, they remind me of a certain double angle. Do you remember that when we have sine of 2a I believe you remember this that sine of 2a is equal to sorry it's equal to 2 sine a cos a so we're going to be making use of this knowledge so when it comes to this double angle we can actually say that this value is the same as this one and this one so in this case our items here are a plus b over 2 and here is a plus b over 2. So when you use this these rules, because we're going to convert this, so we have them in this format, then we're going to convert them back into that format. So we are simplifying our equation. So we end up having this. So this value here becomes that. So it's sine 2 into this angle a plus b over 2. And then this also becomes sine 2 into a minus b over Two, and thus we've simplified it now we can see that the next step is this two can multiply in brackets even here and then you can see that the twos will cancel so the twos cancel on both sides and this is what we end up with now we can see that there is the denominator and this are alike so this cancels with one of the denominator values because the denominator value since it's squared it means it's this times itself so that's what we have so this cancels with that and hence we remain with that and then hence we've proved our equation all right let's move on to question number four so being asked to prove that in any triangle sine a half bracket b minus c is equal to small b minus small c over small a cos a half capital a so let's solve this but now let's start with the right hand side because the right hand side is where the small letters are so it's going to be easier for us to work from the right right hand side in this case so from sine rule, we all again remember this. So we also make the small, the lowercase letters, the subject in each in each one. And then that's what we end up with. And then when we substitute them into this equation, this is what we have. So the first step we can actually see is we can cancel out the two R values. Let's first pull them, we factorize them out, and then they cancel. Then that's what we actually remain with. Right now, next we can actually see that in our final proof there is no letter A. It's either a B or a C. So we have to find of eliminating A from both sides. So we know that from angles of a triangle, A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. So when you make A the subject, A is equal to 180 minus B plus C. So when we substitute in the values of A, that's what we have. So we substitute in the values of A here and there. So now we can see that uh, actually right here, this a half will enter the brackets and then 180 degrees divided by 2 is 90 minus, then this will, this will become b plus c over 2. So here there will be a change to be 90 minus b plus c over 2. Then here, this just expands uh, as usual and then that's what we have. So this is what happens when you expand the 2. Now, a sign of 180 is always a 0, but a cos of 180 is a negative 1. Of which a negative one will multiply this negative and they'll cancel then we'll remain with sine b plus c here and then right here we know that a cos of 90 is zero but a sine of 90 is one so that means this side we're, all, we're only going to remain with this value there okay so that's what we end up with all right so this is what we actually have so this is what it changes to okay so now we've successfully emitted a from both sides i believe now it's time we can apply factor formula to the numerator so this is what we have so using factor formula in the numerator we can actually see that this expands to become that okay and that is what we actually have okay
All right, now we can actually see that this value here can actually multiply with the numerator. Then when it does, this is what it all becomes. But we can actually see that there is actually a certain similarity here. We can actually see that this is slight, is in a way identical to this. So we have to group them together. So we're going to group this and this together. And then they'll, res they'll, they'll look in the format to sign A. So this reminds me of two sine A cos A. It reminds me of that double angle arrangement of width. This becomes sine of two into this angle. So that's what we actually end up with. So in simplified format, this is what this becomes. And then we remain with that. Now this two can multiply inside the brackets. And then when it does, we end up with that. So the twos cancel. And then we have this. Now this and this can cancel. And then hence we remain with that now to become this this a half just pulls out of this bracket and remain with sine a half into b minus c hence we've proved our equation all right let's look at question number five i believe this is the last question prove that in any triangle tan capital b minus c is equal over two is equal to lowercase b minus lowercase c over lowercase b plus lowercase c quote a capital a over two so let's solve this. So from right angles of a triangle, I mean, I sorry, from the right handed hang, right hand side, we can actually see that this is the value that we have. As usual, I prefer working with the values where the small letters are. So we're going to make use of the sign rule again. So let's make the lowercase letters the subject. Then that's what we have. Then we're going to substitute in those values into where we have this lowercase letters. Then that's what we have. So factorize out to R. As we have there then the two r values cancel then that's what we end up with now uh we're going to first leave this because it's in a form of court and that is a little bit complex to deal with so we're going to first leave it as it is so let's first deal with finding the factor formula on these sides okay so that's going to be our major step so let's first use factor formula so with factor formula we actually see that these two expand to become that now when we simplify uh this and this we can actually first see that these twos cancel and then we end up with that now a cos we can actually see that this and this are similar and a cos over a sine becomes a cot and then a sine over a cos becomes a tan value now we can already see that this is this appears in our final proof so that means we will have to find a way of eliminating this and that as the next step all right so we can actually see that this can be stated as uh, let's simplify this so that we actually have an a value that can easily cancel out with this so let's first find of putting an a there okay because something that has a b plus c and this cannot cancel out with each other so we know that a plus b plus c is equal to 180 degrees so so we know that b plus c which is the value we have here is equal to 180 degrees minus a. so therefore we have that so it's actually simplified as that now we can actually see that the two divides on both sides and remain with 180 over 2 which is 90 minus a over 2 now the next step that happens here is we would actually want to expand this as a double angle but we cannot expand this except if it is in a tan format so what would come to mind for someone to do is someone may be like okay let's change it into a turn and let's see so let's first try this out so this is how it would normally have been done so you would have converted this into a turn value of course this will be uh, a one over turn 90 minus a over two so this becomes one over turn 90 minus a over two of which when you multiply a one over that times this this will go to the top and then we'll have this the value we get here at as the denominator into cot a plus i mean cot a over two now when we choose to expand this value in the denominator as a as a double angle we can actually see that we end up having that expansion but now here is where the problem comes when i press in my calc the value of tan 90 i see that it gives me a math error so that means that this is impossible to do so in mathematics we cannot solve for tan of 90 so someone would find themselves stuck so uh the solution to this is we should find an alternative way to do 
it so we're going to discard this method and then we're going to use another method so the method we're going to be use is we're going to be making use of core function identities formula so core function identities will help us to work this out okay now what we will have what will happen is we're going to look for the core function identity that represents a court so we're going to find a cop uh, because we want this uh, to easily cancel uh, with with the value that we actually have here now we know that this side here can be represented as 1 over tan a over 2 so this side here can be represented in form of tan so what happens is uh, let's convert this uh, let's get a core function identity that uh, relates a court to a tan Alright, so I have my list of core function identities. So let's just take a look at them. A court under tan. So remember that uh, when we look at the court side, we know that a court is equal to that, as you can actually see there. A court theta is equal to that. But we can also see that what we are aiming for is we want to simplify one side to the other. So we're actually looking at converting a court. Now, the example that we actually have has a court with values inside brackets. Actually, it's more similar to this. So this is what we actually have. Then we want this. Uh, sorry about that. So we actually want this. We want this to be simplified into that. So we can actually see a court of, of, uh, a court of 90 minus theta. If we simplify that, it can actually be stated as tan of theta. So in our example, because we have a cot of 90 minus a over 2, so our theta is a over 2, it means that this a over 2 can be placed here. So that means that the cot 90 minus a over 2 is equal to tan a over 2. Right. So in our core function identities, we can actually now see that this is equal to that. Right, so therefore, when we replace this, uh, when we replace this value with a tan a over two, we can actually have that. But this is equal to one over tan a over two, and this and this can cancel. So when we cancel those out, we remain with tan b minus c over two. So this is where core function identities formula can become uh, quite useful in cases where we have such situations where will easily not know how to take the next step so it helps simplify the journey for us so that's it with this number so trial questions i've i've just set some questions for you to try out and this will help you perfect your knowledge of cosine rule sine rule and then your core function identity so this is number one number two and then number three number four so in number three and four i've given you answers that you can compare with what you get and then this you just have to prove and see that the final value is the value on the other side of the equal sign. Thank you so much for watching. If this video really helped you, feel free to leave a like on the video and feel free to leave a comment to tell me if it was really helpful to you. And then if you need this channel, I still remind you to subscribe and then make sure to hit the notification bell so that you get updated every single time I upload a new video. See you all in my next video.